Do we have anyone else who has a question? Yes, sir. And please, please state your name. Uh, my name is Don Sturzma. I am employed by the Iowa Utilities Board. I'm also representing the National Association of Pipeline Safety Representatives here today. And I would like to apologize for getting my speaker request in too late to make the list. But I would like to make a few brief comments. And of course, I have the advantage of hearing the panel discussions first, which would do a total and rather disorganized rewrite, which I will proceed to deliver as best I can. Uh, first of all, uh, PHMSA needs the standards organizations. Could you turn it, closer to the yeah. mic? Okay. I've got to bend over. Uh, PHMSA needs the standards organizations. It, it gives you a pipeline. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, it gives you a, a pipeline, if you'll pardon the expression, to a vast pool of expertise, of talent, of experience that could no way be duplicated with in-house staff. Even giving unlimited budget and a power to draft, I don't think you could uh, match what's already available out there and participating voluntarily. And of course, if you want to know what it would look like, uh, FEMS had drafted all its own standards. I suggest you look at the original Part 192, which is basically a a plagiarized rewrite of NCB 31.8, but it still adopted a wealth of other standards incorporated by reference even at that stage. I really don't see any, there's really no practical alternative to incorporation of standard by reference. But, uh, but as regards to the mark about uh, if you stop, if you end the source of funding for these organizations, somehow things are going to keep happening. I don't think so. A dog isn't going to hunt if you quit feeding it. Uh, just can't do it. Uh, first of all, I also point out that the advantage of a uh, sales-funded organization is actually one of greater independence. If it's not dependent on industry donations for its uh, existence, if it has to produce a product that is sold because people wanted, want it, need it, and can use it, that's certainly, I think, an incentive uh, for expertise, which is not to say that NAPSA doesn't have a few issues with the uh, standards process. Uh, we have representatives on some of the uh, standards uh, teams and committees, but we do suffer, for what was alluded to earlier, a really difficulty in competing uh, with some of the major players. Uh, there's a part-time voluntary expertise exercise on our part, uh, and it's very hard to compete with the guys who that's their full-time job. And also we have some exception with what I would call designer standards, where PHMSA has a rulemaking in process and there is a rush to develop a standard for PHMSA to incorporate. Uh, unlike the more traditional standards, which have stood the test of time and use before they are adopted into federal standards, uh, these uh, brand new things uh, don't come with that uh, certificate of authenticity, as the way I'll put it. And to the extent that those are considered in the rulemaking process, I would surge, certainly encourage that, unlike the standards, the standard method, that that not be a straight up or down adopt or don't uh, adopt the standard at that point. I think there should be an opportunity for further comment uh, on the standard itself that would either uh, encourage FEMSA to uh, write exceptions in the regulations to a certain provisions in an adopted standard, something that's made very limited use of in the current rules, or an, or an option where uh, comments assembled during the rulemaking from other sources outside of the original team would be sent back to the standards organization and ask that they take another look at their standard in light of the comments that have been received from a wider audience. I would certainly encourage that. And as for the uh, example of should, should some sort of government alternative funding be provided to the standards organization, uh, well, all I can say is that as, as a state who owes my program to federal money, I will say that you do lose a certain amount of independence when you take federal money. I'll just let it go at that. I'm getting a dirty look from the feds. <laughs> uh, but this does have broad implications. As a state regulatory agency, uh, we adopt standards uh, from many sources and many purposes other than our pipeline safety program. 
so this does have if uh, whole business of whether and whether or how you can adopt industry standards does have you know broader implications besides just specifically the pipeline uh, community. It, quite apparent from the discussion here today that this is an issue that's been brewing for a long time, but because nobody had a good idea what to do, how, what to do about it, it can't keep getting kicked down the road. Well, the can, uh, I guess the can isn't going to move anymore. So we have to figure out a way to deal with it. And of course, there, as alluded to, there are many conflicts between this provision of law and other well-established uh, branches of law, and it's unclear how that can be resolved. I wish I could stand here and say that after listening to your presentations this morning, I have the answer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, but I'm hoping that with the presentations here and for the discussion this afternoon, there will be some sort of uh, path where it will make itself apparent. Thank you very much.